good? He's a wonderful God, isn't he? How many of you know that when you have gone through some things, you all you have to do is stand? Turn to someone today and say, I'm going to stand. Praise God. Stand to your feet continually as I'm going to call on someone who's here, who's visiting with us. If she would just come and bless us with a song before I deliver this word on the same subject as Stan. I'm going to call us to Patricia Osborne. Come and bless us Patricia with a song, Stan. Praise God. Good morning, church. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can live? Seems like you can't make it through. Tell me what do you say when your friends turn away? And you're alone. You're so alone. Tell me what do you give when you've given your all?
that the teacher said to her, it's time to sit down. And although she was obedient and sat down, the story goes on to say that although she was sitting in her heart, she was still standing. Some of us need to realize it is time for us to stand up for what is right. We may be in situations, we may be in places where we feel we know it is wrong. But my message to you today is just stand. When you have done all you can do, stand. Let me go into your house today. Some of you sitting right here don't know what to do in your situation. Some of you have prayed as much as you can pray. Some of you have cried as much as you can cry. But I'm here to encourage you today, it's time to take a stand. Some of you have talked as much as you can talk. Sometimes it's time to stop talking and take a stand. God has called each and every one of us under the mighty power of the Holy Ghost to stand. We look to the word of God. Look at Esther. Those of you who know who the word. The book of Esther. Sometimes you need a good woman to take a stand. And we look in the book of Esther. And how she decided within her heart. She purposed within her heart. How many remember this story? The Bible says that she, said she risked her life. Not any of any person could go to the king. But she purposed in her heart, I'm going to take a stand. She said, if I die, I die. But today, not tomorrow, I'm going to see the king. This time, she took a stand. She said, I'm going to stand up for what is right. Somebody needs to speak and say, this is wrong. And she took a stand. We go even further, and we look at the Hebrew boys. The story has been told so many times. They could have just bowed and said, okay, king, we will bow and we will do whatever you say. You said, eat this, we'll eat that. We'll do whatever you say to do. But I'm so grateful that the Hebrew boy said, you know what? Even if our God is not able to deliver us, because we believe what God said, he, they took a stand and said, we are going to stand regardless and we're going to see what God is going to do. And not only for themselves, but for everyone that was around them, they saw what God would do. We look at the disciples. How many remember the day of Pentecost? They could have just stayed and said nothing. But the Bible declares that the disciples and Peter stood up. And they stood up in that day, on that day of Pentecost. And they prayed. And what happened in the day, on the day of Pentecost? The Spirit of the Holy Ghost fell on that place. And not only just fell, and then people shouted and spoke in tongues, but the Bible declares further on in the scripture that many were added to the house of God. And so they took a stand. And Joshua, I'm reminded of Joshua. What did Joshua say? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When nobody else is doing the right thing. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's taking a stand. We, there's so many instances. Sister Marlene always speaks about the woman with the issue. The woman with the issue. What did that woman do? That woman took a stand. She said, regardless of who is in front of me, I'm going to press through. And I'm going to take a step because I have a need. And my need is going to be met today. And she said, I'm going to press through the, the crowd and receive my deliverance. I'm going to press through the crowd and receive my healing. And what happened to that woman? She received her healing. Jesus recognized her. Not because of someone who pulled on him, but because of her faith. She took a stand and she said, God would deliver her. So here I come today just to remind you, we have a life that we live. We have so many things that we go through on a daily basis, speaking about taking a stand. We have a pity party that we play with ourselves day by day. Look at me. Look how sorrowful I am. Look what I'm going through and we complain and we murmur and we, 
We carry on. And we say, what are we going to do? We need to stand. Today, I'm telling you, you need to stand. Look how many people stood in the Bible. When they were all alone, they stood. Look what would have happened with Adam if he took a stand. Adam decided, okay, I'm going to give in. Eve suggested, he took her suggestion. And even though he was not what he should have been, if he had taken a stand, Cain, Abel, all of that wouldn't have happened if he had taken a stand. Look how important it is to take a stand. Sometimes in your marriage, you see something that is not right, that's not going on. And you decide to keep quiet. But I'm here to tell you today, it's time to take a stand. Sometimes you allow things to go on for a long time, but it's time to take a stand. There's only a few of us here this morning, but this word is for our church this morning. Take the word of God for what it is. It's not Sam's word. It's not something I conjured up. I laid in the middle of the night last week and I said, God, if I'm given an opportunity to speak over the next little while, I always say, God, speak to me. Tell me what I need to say to the church and to God's people. And as I wrestled in the night, God said, tell the church it's time to take a stand. So many times we suffer unnecessarily because we have not taken a stand. Our own salvation, hear me, hear me really good this morning. Our own salvation suffers because we don't take a stand. We sit there and we say, oh, I don't know, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do this? No, take a stand. The Bible is very clear. When it says in Galatians 5 verse 1, it says, it tells us, stand fast. Take a stand fast. Take an approach that no one can stop you from what you're doing because God has commissioned you to do what you're doing. But when you know you're doing the wrong thing, let me just take 10 more minutes if you don't mind. Because someone in this place needs to hear this. When you know what you're doing is wrong, and you're taking a stand in the wrong, let me tell you something. God is going to work on you hard. The Bible declares that if you know to do good, and you do it at night, you'll be beaten with many strides. That's not just written there, but it is the truth. So if you want to take a stand in God, take a stand in God. And leave off the rest. Forget about what anyone else is saying. So many, so many times we get carried away. Oh, but uh, Pastor O'Neill is saying this. Oh, well, Sister Marcia is saying this. Forget about it. What is God saying? God is telling you to take a stand. God is telling you, in your finances, take a stand. If you're not pleasing God, if you're not giving God what is due to God, it's time to take a stand. If your health is failing, and you're wondering why it's failing, take a stand. You can't expect someone else to do it for you. The Bible declares you work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. I'm here to tell you today and to encourage you, only encourage you, it's time for you to take a stand. We have heard many stories, many instances in the Word of God where the Bible declares that many stood up for what they believed. Look at Israel. If we go back and we see, because Moses took the stand, what happened to Israel? Israel came out of Egypt because Moses took a stand. And as much as he didn't want to take the stand at the beginning, when he took the stand, deliverance came. So let me encourage you this morning with the little time that I have with you. We want to see God move in a supernatural way, don't we? Or at least some of us do. How many of us really want to see God move in a supernatural way? And we have been instructing and encouraged to clean up our lives 
Because God will not rest in a vessel that is filthy. And I know probably you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you today. The Bible declares that you can't put new wine into dirty vessels. He wants you to clean up what you've messed up. How many know that's true today? And let me talk to you. Let me tell you that if you want God to work a miracle in your life, and you keep coming to church, and you keep coming in, in the line, and you say, I'm coming for prayer, I'm coming for... Come on, clean up your life. Let God rock a miracle for you. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for righteousness. Run from evil. Every sign that you see of evil, run from it. Run and save your soul because God is calling you. He's calling me to live a life where we, when we stand, we know what we stand for. When we sing and we sing, we know what we're singing about. When we witness to one another, our lives speak volumes that just like Peter, even the shadow can heal them. That's the word that God is telling us this morning. We need to just stand. And don't stand in the way of anyone else. Stand. Stand up for what Jesus is telling you to stand up for. God has instructed us. We're here for a reason. And I said to you a few weeks ago, there's so many of us in here that have issues. And day after day, I, I, I ponder on the house in this place right here. We often say, how come the church is not full? And what's going on? We have 175 seats in here. And why is it on a Sunday morning like this, the church isn't full? Why is it when only when there's a special occasion, the church is full from front to back. What, what's going on? What is the reason? And, we, and I wrestle with it on a weekly basis. And I know, Pastor, you wrestle with it. Pastor, you wrestle with it. And everyone who loves God will wrestle with that question. What is it? Are we afraid to stand up for what is right? Are we afraid to talk to people when we walk in the supermarket and just show them the love of God? God has put something on us as individuals. We've been instructed. We have a, a, a mandate that we have to fulfill. God has called us not to just come here and sit down like we do on a Sunday morning, but God has called us to go out in the highways and the byways and compel them to come and live a life that is submitted to God. Live a life that when, when people tell you to sit down, and even though you sit down, you're still standing and represented. Who do we represent today? Who are we standing up for today? I'm telling you right now, God is standing up for us, but if we're not standing up for him, we can't expect to have someone stand up on our behalf. Today I want to encourage you. If you don't get anything out of this message, take this one thing home. If it's your personal life, stand. When you have cried all you can cry, that your tear ducts dried up, stand. When you have prayed that you have no voice, Pray. Stand. When your husband walks out on you, stand. When you are alone, stand. When you are seeking for relationship and no relationship, stand. When you have nothing in the fridge, stand. When there is no money to pay your bills, stand. What am I trying to say to you this morning? Stand. And I'm telling you, as I said before, if you stand in someone's way, that's the wrong standing I'm talking about. We look even on the streets, it says no standing. There's signs that say no standing. What does that mean? No, you can't stay, stay here with your car. You need to move along. But we're telling you today, 
The word of God is telling you, just stand. After you've done everything that you can do, just stand. God is calling us. Sometimes we sit in our closets at home and we say, God, I want to do something for you. I want to be a witness for you. All you have to do is stand. Stand up for holiness. Stand up for righteousness. I know what in this day and age, when it comes to holiness, people are just running here and there and everywhere. There is no holiness that is reverenced these days. And if you don't have God in you on the inside, you will stand for anything. Someone said, if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for anything. Think about that. So if I come to you and I say, sister, what do you believe? Oh, I don't know. So someone else comes to you and say, oh, God said this. You say, okay, yeah. Because you don't know. Every wind and doctrine that comes along, you just take it in. Take it in. You have no idea what you're standing for. But as I said before, after you've done all you can do, you need to stand. Even when you're on the edge and you're like, should I do this? Should I not do it? If it's wrong, don't do it. Stand. Sometimes we get complacent in our minds and we're like, oh, you know what? I'm seeking for these natural things and I'm, I'm going to buy a bigger house. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. No, stand. The Bible says there is stand still. Sometimes we have to stand still and to see the salvation because God is calling us in a supernatural way. Stand. We need to learn to do church in a different way, in a different manner, as we come to worship God. Many of us in here, our minds are all over the place. And we're in the house. We're in the church. And we're all over the place. Our mind is thinking, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do after church? What food am I going to cook? So on and so forth. The saying says, stand. Stand for God. Stand up for righteousness. We can't too, be too busy to stand. We can't be too... Look, look who stood for us. Way back on the cross. If Jesus said, I'm not going to go for them, and I'm not going to stand for them, we wouldn't be here today. We would have been lost and dead and gone. But I thank God today that Jesus stood in our place and he took our place, giving us an opportunity to stand. I want you to stand to your feet today. As we close out here, many of you this week that has just passed, have gone through some rough times. We think of Sister Ben, we think of Sister Nelda, who God is in the process of working miracles in their lives. But we think of us who come on a regular basis to church, and we say, God, we don't know where we are in God. We come, but we don't know where we are in God. It's time for you to take a stand in God. If you want God to run a miracle in your life, to change your situation, it's time for you to stand up for God. Someone said integrity, it's not something that's seen in the open. When no one's watching, you're doing the right thing. You're standing up for God. You're making sure that whatever you do is at a standard with God that he would be acceptable. Today, I just want you to take one minute, just do some self-examination. Say, so, Father, am I really standing up for your principles? Father, am I really doing what you have called me to. We just went through a youth convention that the man of God preached and he delivered sound, solid words to each and every one of us. The question is, are we standing up for what was preached last week? 
Are we still standing or are we waiting for the next convention to come? And then we'll get back on the, the bike. We need to stand regardless. When the earthquakes come, we need to stand. When the storms come, we need to be able to stand. When the tsunamis come in our lives, we need to be able to stand. How can we do this? Only in God we can take a stand and have that grip that when the waters come to overflow us, we are standing so firm that they cannot overflow us. When the thunderstorms come, we are rooted, we are firm, we are solid, knowing that God is with us as we take our stand in Him. The Word of God is telling us today, it's time for us to take a stand and stand up for righteousness, stand up for holiness. God has called us for a long way and because of it, we're here. And we're here to do one thing, to take the stand in God. Father, I thank you today for your people. I thank you today, dear God, that when we take the stand in God, you take a stand for us. 2,000 years ago, approximately, God, you stood for us. Here we are today, your children stand before you. It is my prayer, it is everyone in here's heart's desire that they would stand for holiness. They would stand for righteousness, dear God. There's individuals in here today who are hurting. And not just hurting, dear God. There's some deep-rooted things that need to come out in this place today. God, you are standing right here to do just that. But we have to release ourselves from whatever holds us back and take the stand in God. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to what I've been involved in. I'm not returning from whence I've come. I'm going to take a stand. And today is a new day. And I'm moving forward. God, I ask you, as your people stand, dear God, I'm asking you that you would reach them. Change minds this morning. Change thoughts this morning. Dear God, I'm asking you that this will not be just another day, but the people of God who sit and stand in this place today will actually take inventory of themselves and say, God, I need to stand up. I need to let go off of what I'm holding on to. I need to pray like I've never prayed before. I need to ask God to release me from what I'm in. Dear God, I need you to help me. I'm sick and tired of being at the same place. God, release me from whatever bothers me. Dear God, I pray for your children today that you would reach down in their hands and place in their hands something that they can use to win the victory in their lives. Lord, you have called us and you have set us apart. And I'm praying at this time that you would just send deliverance to your people. That they will be able to stand with certainty. Stand with authority. Knowing that God is with them. Bless your people today. Let each soul be touched by the word of God. Let deliverance happen. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Because you're the one that is worthy of all praise. At this time, I'm going to ask if those who need prayer will come to the front. Only you that need prayer to face this week come to the front. And we're going to pray for you. 
God has called us. Some of us don't know what each other are going through. We look at each other and think, maybe they're all right. And no, we don't have to get into people's business. But when God reveals something to you, I encourage you, don't. Don't sit down on it. Go and minister to that person. Speak to that person. And let God minister through you to those people. The song says, after you've done all you can do, stand. It's tiresome to keep coming to the altar week after week with the same issue. God never intended us to come back and back with the same thing over and over again. It's time to take a stand. It's time to say enough is enough. It's time to put your foot down and say, no, you know what? I'm not dealing with this anymore. The God who has you in his hand is able to bring you over and through it and make you be victorious. Today you know your situation. You know your problem. And it's sad. I will tell you, there are nights that I lay on my bed and I cry for many of you who are in this place. There's deep-rooted problems. And you come to church and you smile. But deep down on the inside, you're destroyed. And I often say this, and my wife doesn't the say, but I often say this. I lay there and I say, God, help these people of God in Brampton. It's not about doing church. It's not about just going and going through the motions. That's not what it's about. It's time for you when you've become sick of what you are doing, that you say, enough is enough. I'm gonna take a stand against it. Children of God. And I'm sure, Pastor, you can agree with me. As I lay there in the night, and my eyes are closed, and my mind runs on the people of God right here in Brampton. I'm telling you right now, there's a burning in my heart and I see the struggles. You don't have to tell me. I'm telling you right now, it's not all good. And I struggle with it. Some of you I've approached and I've spoken to you directly. When God gives me the word and I speak to you directly, I don't fool around with God. Some may look at me as simple, but I'm telling you when God speaks to me and I speak it to you, it's not from me, it's from God. And I'm telling you and I lay there and I say, God, it's painful. I see it, I know it, and you struggle. We shouldn't have so much struggle in the house of God. I'm not talking fight against people who are unsaved. I'm talking about children of God struggling. But because you neglect to take a stand for the right things. And I'm telling you today, it is time for you to let go off of what you're holding on to. Let it go. And let God do the work. Many of you Say, oh well, I'll live to see you next week. It may not happen. And the struggles that you face, the marriages that are in utter disarray in the house of God, it's sickening. I'm not saying my wife and I are perfect, but one thing I can tell you, and you take this for what it is, if we have a problem, if we have issues, we don't bring it to the church. We deal with it at home. I can't come and stand here and say anything to you and know in my heart there's an issue with my wife and myself. 
If we are in God together, we need to deal with it together and take a stand together and let God work it out together. If I'm not willing, then I need to move myself out of the way and let my wife take it to God in prayer and deal with it. But I need to be willing. It's a union. It's not a reunion. Reunion is you only go to a certain place only specific times to reunite. It is a union. A union is round, never ending. That's why the wedding ring is never ending. Through good, through bad. The marriage vows were not written just because they were written. They have meaning. And when you become tired of your partner, it doesn't mean you must go to someone else. When you become tired and disturbed of what that partner is doing, it doesn't mean you check someone else. It's time to work together and take a stand together. And those of you who have wandering minds, I can talk about it. Those of you who have wandering minds, you need to stand up and tell that mind, no. I need to be single in this of one mind. You need to serve God and Him alone. I'm going to pray for you individually. And I want you to believe what God tells me to tell you in your life. I want to see change this week. You got to believe it this week that you want to see change. Father, I pray for my brother right here. Dear God, his heart is full of love for you. And dear God, we just pray that you would keep that love burning in his heart for you. That there will become a day when he will pour out that love to his family and his friends. And they will receive goodness. Dear God, we claim victory in his life. That he will be what God wants him to be. And not what someone else wants him to be. Dear God, we claim victory on every hand. Today, dear God, we pray for Sister Jennifer who is here. You know her heart. It has been wounded. It has been crushed. But after all that's said and done, you've allowed her to pick herself up, stand up, and be a woman of God. Dear God, I pray that this week there will be a turning point in her life where that boldness to speak the word will come out as never before. I claim victory for her and for her family. She worries constantly about her family, her children. Dear God, I ask you that you would answer her prayer that her children will be saved. Lord God, as she sets the example, dear God, I ask you that you would just continue to keep her encouraged as she goes along from day to day, not discouraged. Lord, help that someone will come along and will raise her hands up and encourage her and tell her that her work is not in vain. Dear God, we bless her today. Lord, continue to keep her. I pray for Sister Marlene today. You know everything about her. She is not someone that God you've overlooked. You know, the deep, deep, deep pain that's in her heart. The Bible says deep calleth unto deep. And dear God, you have not overlooked her cry. And today, dear God, I ask you to strengthen her for the journey that lies ahead. Lord, you know whatsoever may come her way. Dear God, strengthen her. Keep her focused on what God has called her to. The enemy may throw so many different darts, but God, in the name of Jesus, let her stand strong in God and not look to the left or to the right, but look to the God of heaven and earth. Pray for Sister Tanisha who's here. Psalm says, when your friends walk away, it tells you to stand. What do you do? When your heart has been broken, filled with pain, 
You just stand. No one knows when Sister Tanisha's at home in her quiet place and she's crying out to God and say, God, deliver me. When she wants to pick her stuff up and run, God in heaven, you see her. And dear God, we're praying together today that the God of the heavens will work for her as she struggles through. Dear God, make it easier for her and her children and her husband. Even though they're not here today, dear God, we pray that you would speak right to them right where they are. Lord, you came from heaven to earth to not only just show us the way, but to set things straight. Help her to take the stand in God as never before, not wavering for one minute, but taking a stand in God to I got to do what I got to do in God. I'm not going to weep anymore, but I'm going to let God have his way. God, I pray for a pastor who's here. You have laid a heavy, heavy calling on his life. And there are days that we share together the ins and the outs of ministry. And God, you are calling me to pray specifically for his strength. Dear God, you don't send your servant out and don't send them with strength. God in heaven, the work is heavy. The laborers, unfortunately, are few. And sometimes, when the workload is so heavy, he become weak. But the God of heaven and earth, Lord, help him to stand up, knowing that God himself stands for him. And when everything around him gives way, dear God in heaven, send strength from the east. Send strength from the west, their father. Send strength from above. God, I claim victory in his life. Just because he's a leader doesn't mean he never faces anything rough. Dear God, it's even worse. And dear God, we pray today you would deliver him and set him free from whatever lies ahead. Help him to retain more wisdom to deal with your people. Help them not to reign with a hard, heavy hand, but let the love of God be demonstrated. Lord, encourage his heart. Sometimes as a leader, when you're there, you look for encouragement because you're always giving it out. God sent someone to encourage him in the toughest times. We give you thanks for what you're going to do. I pray for Sister Denisha today. What do you do when you have nothing less to do? You just stand. Dear God, you saved her soul. You allowed her to go down and water baptism. That's not the end of it. She's a young lady that needs help. She needs God's help. She needs sustaining help. She needs people to come around her and just, Lord God in heaven, Comfort her in many ways that only God you can do. And today we pray that you would help her. Day after day, she's seeking for something. But it's not going to be found in anyone. It's not going to be found in a man. It's not going to be found in a woman. The answer will only come from God. So dear God, I pray today that you would speak to her even tonight. That she will receive something from you. I pray for Pastor O'Neill Walker. I said to him this week, Jesus was encouraging Peter. He said, Satan desired to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you. And dear God, whenever God sets us up for success, the enemy always comes to try and knock us down. Simple prayer today. Help him to be obedient to you. Not to someone else. Although it may be tough. 
Help them just to listen to you. Bless them, dear God. I pray for Sister Natasha, dear God. The song is that Jesus knows all our struggles. God, you know her struggles. You know her rough times. You know when she tells God it's, it's more than enough. I can't take it. She made a decree at the beginning of this year that this year is going to be a year when she's going to take a stand. We remember that. We are witnesses to that. And dear God, we pray today as she faces this week that you help her to take a stand. When everything looks terrible, take a stand in God. Because when everyone else around you has failed you, God will never fail you. He will stand up for you. He is your help. God, I pray for Jason. The songwriter says, I'm standing down here at the river. Satan doesn't want me to cross. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. God, thank you for allowing Jason to cry out to you this year in a different way, in an indescribable way. And dear God, I'm not putting him on the spot today, but I thank God that you're doing something on the inside that his entire family will see what a great miracle God is going to rock in Jason's life. In the quiet seasons, you know him. You know his heart's desire. You see how he labors. Dear God, in quiet. But God, you're going to reward him in the open. Give him time. Stay faithful. And God will give you a blessing that is untold. God will bless you indeed. Just remain in God. God bless Jason. His name is in the Bible. A warrior of God. Dear God, I ask you that this week, as Jason kneels down to pray, that you will answer his request. Dear God, I pray for our dear sister Angela. Jesus knows all about your struggles. Her family, everything. And as you kneel and you praise that God saved my family, my, my children, God has not overlooked it. And I pray today that you, dear God, would meet her need as she seeks for you. You will find her and she will find you. Lord, deliver her and set her free in your precious name. Pray for the sister. She has sought the face of God over and over again. She has instructed her children to do what is right. That's not on her head. But sometimes in life, the winds of hurt blow into our lives. Hurt by church people. Hurt by her own family. But God, you stop by here to tell her this day that the God, the same God, who took her out of many things, will bring her through victorious. Bless my dear sister today. Increase her faith in God. Don't give up. You're on the brink of a miracle. God in heaven help you. Sister Smith, at times you become discouraged. But you know you're standing God. And God says continue to take your stand in God. You see some things and it makes you shake your head. And you go in your quiet place and you say, God, this should be this way. Our God is awesome. Your prayer is not in vain. He will meet you. And he will answer your prayer. Father, we thank you 
God, we pray for Sister Marcia. Lord, she's standing. And sometimes she worries about her family over and over again. God, help her to continue to stand. Her daughters and the rest of her family, her husband, Dear God, I ask you that you would help her not to just get, get discouraged, but to continue. God, I pray for Sister Patricia and her daughter, Letitia, who is here. You know them. You're acquainted with them. And dear God, as they do ministry in God, I pray that you would fill the back up. Everything that they have lost, you will give them double for what they have lost. And they will see not too long from now the blessing that God will bestow upon their lives. I pray for Patricia's husband, Rick, as he serves God in a supernatural way as a deacon at his church, that God will reach down for him. I pray for her son. Dear God, I pray for Timon today. Something on the inside will shift and he will take a stand for God and not for anyone else. We give you thanks today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise.